Lord. Jesus died on the cross. And I know it was the blood, the blood for me. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> that was Hallelujah. 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 He's the greatest for for that selection from the music ministry. Thank you so much, Ari, for participating with your grandmother and your auntie, TT. Yes, you know it was the blood that saved you. Amen. Amen. Perfect song for a perfect day of resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, without further ado, go ahead. I'm going to move on. We're going to move on now to spoken word. Crystal has a spoken word she would like to do on this morning. So go ahead, sister. Get your spoken word. The Lord, praise the Lord, everybody. I um, just want to give some honor to God. Um, you know, when I'm in my moments of meditation, God will, you know, bring something to me. Um, I guess when I was a younger girl, uh, me and sister Kimmy uh, thought we was rappers. <laughs> yes, so, we did. <laughs> so God has always blessed us with poetry. Um, uh, the title of this is Didn't Stop There. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for my sins, showing me your love and care but you didn't stop there. You rose from the grave and ascended in the air, but you didn't stop there. You sent back your Holy Spirit to guide us in despair, but you didn't stop there. Amen. You led us to holiness through your word and said all our burdens you would bear, but you didn't stop there. You taught us to repent of our sins, follow you and we would be spared but you didn't stop there you took away our fears and your wisdom you shared but you didn't stop there you have met all of our needs and dried all of our tears but you didn't stop there one day we will be with you in all our answered prayers thank you almighty jesus because your love will still not stop there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That good. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Be the glory. Amen. Yes. You go, uh, Crystal. <laughs> yeah. That's a nice uh spoken word. Very, very um encouraging. Uh, very compassionate. Speaking about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that he did not stop there. How many are so glad he did not stop there? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. We would not be here if he decided to stop. Amen, somebody. Yes. So we uh, thank the Lord for her spoken word. Anybody who wants to do a spoken word is always welcome. Also, uh, DP is asking for everyone's, he said, happy Resurrection Day. May I have everyone's email address? So I have emailed you the recap for today's service. Amen. So if y'all want to um, get it, get the what he's sending out, the recap of today's service, um, put your email in the um, chat. Everybody put your email in the chat for him. All right. All right. So to God be the glory. Thank everybody for your participation on this uh, very important day. We're going to go ahead and have our communion right now. Um, we're going to come. I just need a reader to read the book of Matthew, chapter 26. Um, go from chapter 26, verse 7. Uh, go from verse 26. Read 26 and 27. And then um, we will we'll, um, just read 26 through 29. And we'll do our communion. And then we'll hear the word to come. Amen. All right. You say Matthew 26. Yes. Chapter 26, verse 26 through 29. All right. Let me see. As they were eating. Oh, oh, let me get mine. Hold on. Let me get mine. <laughs> All 
All right, I get that. Hope everybody got their right. yeah. cracker in their juice. Yes. As they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and asked God to bless, God's blessing on it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, take it and eat it for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, each of you drink it, for this is my blood, which seals the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you as my father in my father's kingdom. They sang Amen. a hymn and went out of the Mount of Olives. Amen. Amen. So everybody, eat your cracker, drink your juice. So in Jesus' name, amen. 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 So the crackers represent his body that was torn down, beat up for us. Okay. That's why we get our healing. Because of the stripes that he wore on his body. Okay. That's why when we're sick in our body, our, our healing comes from the Lord. Okay. Ultimately, you know, the physicians and the nurses and the people in the medical industry can help, but the true deliverance and true healing comes from the Lord Jesus. This is the whole purpose. And then we drink the um, wine, which it represents, he said, for this is my blood which confirms the covenant between God and his people. Amen. No more circumcision is needed. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory is not needed. In the Old Testament, they had to be circumcised, all uh, male children uh, from eight, if, once you're eight days old, you had to be circumcised. So they still practice that in America and other countries also today. But God is saying now, Jesus is saying there's no need for that because there's a what? New covenant. A covenant, what? Of blood. Amen. Amen. To make that atonement. No more using the lamb and the bullocks. Okay? Like in the Old Testament. They don't have to do that no more. Okay? Because why? We have the unwavering, un, uh, uh, we have the defeated blood of Jesus Christ. All right? He's undefeated in every area in life. You just have to be able to to accept what he's saying in his word and follow him. Amen. All right. So to God be the glory. I thank you for reading that, Monique. And everybody, you know that we're doing it corporately as the body of believers. Amen. That's what today represents. Amen. All right. So let's get to the uh, living word. Let's get to the living word on today. Not going to be long before you, but... um. Just some real practical um, situations um, and things that the Lord wants to enlighten the child of God on in certain areas of our life. Amen. Okay, so today we're going to be coming out of the book of John. Book of John. Somebody can read. We're coming out. Uh, John chapter 7, verse 38. John chapter 7, verse 38. Um, somebody can take that and read that. I read it. Okay. Wait, well, read, start from 37 to, and read from 37 to 39. <laughs> <laughs> on the last day the climax of the festival Jesus stood and shouted to the crowd anyone who is thirsty may come to me Don't let her out. anyone who believes in me may come and drink for the scriptures declare rivers, rivers of living water will flow from his heart 
when he said living water, he was speaking of the spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. So this is going to be um, we're li the title Living in Babylon. That's the title of today's message living in babylon okay america is like considered babylon okay um that's where we live um so john is saying um in the book of john is saying here that on the last day the climax of the festival jesus stood and shouted to the crowd anyone who is thirsty may come to me anyone who believes in me may come and drink okay for the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart. So living waters is living waters flowing from you. What type of living water is flowing out of you? Everybody up here has already what? The accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior has been born again, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Spirit, so you should be able to say that living waters do, do flow through me. So what type of, li uh, this is a question, y'all. Hello. What type of living water is flowing through you? What did Jesus say? He said, when he said living water, he was speaking of the Holy Spirit, who will be given to everyone believing in him. Okay. What kind of living water is flowing through you? Go ahead, Crystal. Amen. Your testimony, the truth. Your experience. No, no, no. I want everybody to refer to yourself. What living water is flowing through you? Say me or I. I don't want to hear nothing about nobody else. What kind of living water is flowing through you? My testimony. When I'm giving good counsel to my daughter, when I watch uh, her make decisions that I once made similar decisions and I'm correcting her. Um, yeah. It is the, the living waters because now what what is coming out of me is truth because the Holy Ghost has corrected me in my walk and showed me the errors of my way. So when I speak to my child, I'm, I'm correcting her and helping her to change the way she thinks. And, 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 and by the way, helping her, it will help future generations. Amen. Yes. All right. Excellent um, answer. Everybody, this is about you. I don't want to hear nothing about we, they, he. It's about you. If you're going to answer it, Talk about yourself. Amen. What kind of living waters is flowing out of you? Something that you're getting results from. Something that you're touching somebody else. Just like she said, she can correct her daughter now. And what? With authority. Why? Because now she has been transformed in that area. Amen. You cannot correct nobody if you have not been transformed yourself. Amen. Okay, so anybody else, what kind of living water is coming out of you? Amen. Um, um, forgiveness, um, prayer. Um, it, it's amazing because prayer teaches you to, to look at you. You know, when you go into prayer, you doing Hagar one and five because if there's correction and chastisement that's needed, it's going to come. And you can tell, you know, other people about it as well and pray for them as well as well and the forgiveness because see a lot of people don't know how to forgive haven't been taught those things so the lessons that we are being taught on here to walk holy and live holy and how to be delivered is is what you um your experiences you can tell other people about it so when you see it you can address it to them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know Amen. that's what and that's the important part so they can you know and like um firstborn taught us how to change your perspective about Amen. it Amen. you know instead of looking at things as um as um um, bad, you know, something bad, use it as a stepping stone. Amen. Amen. You know, 
So I thank God for that because, um, I mean, a transformation of the way that you look at things, you, your mind has to be transformed so your heart can be transformed so you can transform the way that you um, do things in life. Amen. So I thank God for that. That's that living water right there. You can Amen. only do it with the word of God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, amen. Great answer. Good answer. Remember, you're talking about yourself. You're not talking about nobody else up here. It's all about this whole year is about self-evaluation for the child of God. So get used to it because this is what the Lord is telling me. He said, this is the most important and crucial thing in a believer's life to understand yourself better. That way you can understand others better and your family members. Amen. Okay. So anybody else, what kind of living water is coming through you? Oh, what is that's... flowing through you? Oh, man, I'm trying to talk fast. Fast is obedience. Um, I'd be obedient to the things that, that God tell me to do. And, and within that people, you know, people seeing me be obedient and they seeing the change and seeing, seeing his, you know, seeing his light shine through me and yeah. it, as well as my kids, they see me uh, being obedient as far as like praying and doing the things that I supposed to do. And then in return, they start doing it too. Like all, all them like to say her prayers and stuff, you know, yeah. see, she see me say my prayers and I, uh, I hear me say, you know, I got to say my prayers and then she do it. And uh, Amen. then, um, people, you know, people just around hear, me, hear the way I change and stuff or, you know, the things that I just do for people being obedient to the Lord. And yeah. you know, this, they know that uh, old T.T. wouldn't have did that. Amen. Well, I could have did it, but I wouldn't have did it as much, you know, this is like I do now. I'll just certain stuff I just do, and it just be without thought. It's just that I know that that's right, and that's what God said do, and I do it. Amen. So, amen. Good answer. Great answer. So she's saying she, on her journey since she's been doing Hey God One Five, considering her ways, self exam, uh, self evaluation is bringing her to be more obedient with the Lord, okay, and in her life. So it's flowing through her, and when it's flowing through you, what does that mean? It means it can touch somebody else. If nothing is flowing through you, then there is nothing in you that's going to touch somebody else's life. So Kamiko said that living water coming out of me is definitely Hagar 1-5, and I got to agree with Sister Crystal on the transformation with our daughters. Amen. Yes. Very, very crucial. Very, very crucial. Very, very crucial to teach these girls, these young women, things that, you know, you've learned on your journey how to do it the correct way. This is why self-evaluation is very important. You cannot correct people if you don't even know the right way how to do it yourself. So, the fact is you can only help people when what? When you have conquered that area in your life. All right? All right. Meaning it's getting easier and easier for me to be obedient. It's getting easier and easier for me to, you know, like Moni said, forgive. The learning how to forgive. It's not just saying it with your mouth. I forgive so-and-so. It's way deeper than that. Y'all know I said I taught on that last Sunday. So or two Sundays ago. If you were not here, you got to go to the uh, Change Your Life Ministries and go on the YouTube and look it up. Because because of time, I can't keep repeating stuff from last Sunday, but or last past in the past. Okay, so right now, living waters have to start coming out of you. It has to start flowing. Ain't that what Jesus Jesus just said? He said, "Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me and may come and drink." of me okay so he's not saying when we come when we're thirsty for truth okay and a better way to do our lives we're not coming just to be coming we're coming so it will start flowing within us flowing within us now it's flowing to a point now when a river flows it's a current so now it's drifting from me and it's going to so and so it's going to this person over there that person over there you got to have 
something to offer the world. When you are a child of the king, you can't run around and talk about, I'm a child of God, but ain't nothing flowing out of you. We represent Jesus Christ on the earth. If it was flowing out of him, it flew to us. Now we have to be able to get our vessels that's broken fixed. So now the water won't be seeping out of us. It will flow out of us. No more seeping with a hole over here, a hole over there. Can't hold no good do sound doctrine. You can't hold on to being obedient. You can't hold on to being kind. You can't hold on to being forgiven. You know, these are things that we are fixing within our lives. So that what? Living waters will flow out of us and flow into a person that's down and out, that's stuck in the mud, stuck in the gutter, where the enemy got them in the chokehold. You can come with the flowing liver, living waters out of you and help pull them up. But if you broke it, you can't help nobody else. Hallelujah. Is there anybody else who wants to answer that question? Uh, What kind of waters is flowing through you? What kind of living water is flowing through you? All right. All right. So let's keep it moving. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. This is all coming together with us, with the assignment ha that has been given by the Lord to do the self-evaluation. Now it's breaking it down and telling us what happens after we put the work in, y'all, after we get healed, after our brokenness is put back together, when God puts us back together, when we are on the right track now. It's so many. We can't stay broken broken forever. We got to start getting fixed, getting fixed. We can't keep walking around with holes in our, with holes. See, because everything that God is putting in, when you are broken, every good thing that's putting, that somebody is, is sowing into you, y'all, you don't get the fulfillment of it because you have holes. You are have brokenness in certain areas. You got cracks and the water is seeping out of the cracks. Do so y'all understand what I'm saying? So you can only hold but so much. This is why you can't go to every believer and say, how do I pray? What is the right way for me to pray? And it's not many believers that can give you the right answer through scripture. This is why it's not enough answers for the child of God. Because don't y'all realize if you are broken vessels, you got cracks in you. If the crack is never mended, you're going to keep seeping water. You're going to know a little bit here, a little bit there. But the more God keeps sowing into you, it's not sticking with you. It's not flowing properly because there's too many cracks in the vessel. It has to be concrete. God got to come in and fix all that mess that you done caused in your life. God got to come in and fix you. But you got to put the work in. So that you will be a vessel God can use. You won't have all these cracks in you. And stuff continually. You've been saved for 14 years and you still got cracks and holes. Okay, so the thing is, we have to learn. This is what we're doing with this work that I have given y'all. Is everybody understanding this? Okay. I need response. Okay, Crystal Monique. Is everybody else on here understanding what I'm saying? The reason why you have to get fit. God got to put the cement into the cracks so that you can hold water, so you can hold the word of God, so you can hold what God is teaching you. Not running around here, been taught stuff for 15 years, and you don't remember nothing. 
and you don't demonstrate nothing in your life. Okay, this is why the self-evaluation is going on. It is greatly needed, okay? So when we get fixed and we work on ourselves, get this stuff taken care of, all these generational curses, when you get that broken off you and your family members, then you can move around and God can start now plugging the holes in you, plugging the holes in your life, plugging the holes in your family. But everybody got to get on one accord because ain't nothing going to go down with everybody fighting each other. Only thing gonna happen is you're gonna get more broke brokenness. And then it'll be so messed up. Uh, you know, it's gonna take years and a lot of work. That's why you do bit by bit, little by little, to get your brokenness fixed. This is why you have to identify what happened in your life to make you have a nasty attitude? What happened in your life to make you hate men or hate women? Or what happened in your life? Why are you always so angry? What happened in your life? Why are you so disobedient? You got to figure that stuff out. That's not God's job. That's your job. Crystal, you have a question? Oh, okay. All right, so let's go. Let's move it. Jeremiah chapter 2. Verse 13. I'll read it. Let's see. Verse 2, verse 13. For my people have done two evil things. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and they have dug for themselves cracked cisterns that can hold no water at all. Exclamation point. Okay, this is the Lord speaking to Jeremiah. This is God himself speaking to uh, Jeremiah, his prophet. He's letting the prophet know they're in the days of uh, captivity in Babylon, okay? The Lord is letting Jeremiah know the reason why all of this went down, all this calamity came upon them. Again, you do what you want to do in your life. You don't take a counsel. And then when all hell break out, you want to blame God. This is what God is telling Jeremiah. He said, for my people have done two evil things. They have abandoned me, the fountain of living water. Hello, somebody. This is why there's no power in the church buildings. They have abandoned the true living water that comes from Christ Jesus. Oh, this is so deep. They have abandoned me, the Lord said, the fountain of living water. And they have dug for, they dug for themselves. Listen, crap, citrus. Citrus is a tank for storing water. Okay, uh, something to store supplies, okay, for the water to flow. So this is something where they use in the old day where they would store water, you know, like jugs, okay? The Lord, listen, are y'all following this? He said, they have abandoned me, the fountain of living water, and they have dug for themselves crack centers that can hold no water at all oh my goodness so he's saying in other words you have dug you out there freestyling here we go y'all see it now this is the word of god that when i'm always saying freestyling you out here trying to do it on your own this is what the lord is saying he said, you trying to dug, you, you have dug for yourself crack. You don't went, you're cracked, you're broken up. You need to be fixed. That's why he's saying the fountain of living water. We abandon God. You know, people run around here talking about the black Israelite. Well, even if we are the black Israelite, we're doing the same thing they did in the Old Testament. Hello, somebody. It ain't no difference. Out here, freestyling, doing it your own way. This is the Lord himself saying this. And he said, um, he said, why has Israel become a slave? Why has he be, been carried away as plunder? Strong lions have roared against him and the land has been destroyed. The towns are now in ruins and no one lives in them anymore. You know why? And that's exactly what's going on in our world today. Hello, y'all, America and, and the foreign country. But we're going to sp speak about America today. This is why the black families are toe up. 
disconnected, disjointed, no love no more in the family like it used to be, you know, when they were holding on to the Lord Jesus, when the old, when our elders were singing them good old hymns, the Lord will make a way somehow, don't know how he's going to do it, but the Lord will make a way somehow, when that disappeared from our race, then everything went to hell in a basket, everything went to hell in a basket, you got black on black crime at an all time high everything is everybody is killing each other backbite then where is the love where is the love where is the love where is the love some people is so stressed out popping pills other people own drugs other people can't stop drinking other people can't stop lying can't stop having sex can't stop stealing can't stop can't stop can't stop why but because the Lord just said it's an evil thing that we have done to turn our back on the one true living God. Don't you know there's repercussions behind every man, woman, boy, or girl. When you turn your back on the real true living God for something that's not real, God will let calamity come your way. There are consequences you will have to pay. Stop looking around like you don't know know what's going on. You don't know what's going on. The people are broken. The people are broken. People need to get fixed. I'm telling you, it's a horrible world we're living in because of the living true God. We have to lift up holy hands unto God. We got to lift Jesus up every opportunity we get for a situation in our lives to turn out right. We can't just get stuck because it's the same old, same old, same old happening to us. We got to lift up holy hands. You got to remember, Jesus died on Calvary for me. I refuse to let this situation tear me away from the one true living God. I refuse to let just because I didn't make the right choice, now I'm depressed. I cannot blame that on God. Can't find a job, can't get the car, can't get the apartment because you got to put God first. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. You got to put him first. He's not taking no second place. If you want things to go right in your life and right for you and to see this word of God in this Bible to come to life in your life, you got to put him first. He is not going to be nobody's second. Clap your hands and give God some glory. Clap your hands and let the king of glory know what you're talking about, Lord. I know what you're saying, dear God. I won't turn my back on you because things ain't going right. I won't forget what you did for me on Calvary a long time ago. I will not keep digging holes for myself. trying to make my own way. When you do that, God backs up off of you. <clears throat> Are y'all hearing me? When you don't check in with, with, with the Lord, when you don't check in with the Lord about whatever you're going through, but about whatever you need in life, whatever it may be, when you disconnect yourself from the true one living God, ain't nothing in your life going to go right. Hello, somebody. That is your source. Didn't Jesus just say, we just read it. He's the living water. And the reason why a lot of our lives are not flowing, flowing. I'm talking about children of the light, not just y'all up on this Zoom. Every believer, life cannot go. It's not flowing the right way. It's not flowing like rivers of living water because they're broken. Now, don't y'all see? Don't y'all see? It, your life could never go and work for you until you got unbroken, until you got fixed. Hello, somebody. Even if it's just one area of your life, until you get fixed, stuff cannot flow out of you. Hello, somebody. 
Only thing going to flow out of you is stinking thinking. Only thing going to flow out of you, you talking about somebody over here. Oh, you talking about you going back and forth, trying to impress somebody on the Facebook. They got a car, now you're all you got to get a new car. Oh, they got a new job, now you got to get a new job. You know, competing with folks that you don't even know. Mad at the world because your mom or your daddy never told you uh, they love you. You know, the thing is, if, your pe if, if you were growing up and you never had people demonstrating love, every person in this life, if you never experienced love from a young child with your mother and father, you need to be running to the cross. You need to be skinning your knees up running to the cross, running to Jesus so Jesus can fix you. The old, song, the old people in the, uh, back in the day used to always say, Jesus, he will fix it. He will fix it, but guess what? You are responsible to fix some stuff that you can do on your own. Hello, somebody. You got to put the work in. And then Jesus will fix it, but you got to acknowledge you got problems. You got issues. Okay, so many Christians are, again, broken, trying to do stuff, but can't get nowhere. It's not flowing. Ain't nothing flowing. Ain't nobody getting healed of cancer and AIDS and ain't all this stuff in these church buildings. Ain't, it's, it's very few of them, very few. Oh, you know how many churches it is in America? We ought to be seeing people getting healed like every, every day, every Sunday. It should be something, because Jesus said, greater works will you do. How can we do greater work and everybody run around here broken? Not taking time out, hey, God, one five. Not taking time out to look in the mirror. Not taking time out realizing what choices I made. That's why my life is jacked up. So now I got to get it correct. I got to get it correct. Now I got to go back and reevaluate stuff. Nobody want to put no work in, no self-work. That's why you got, you know, the mess that we have. You know, cannot hold no water. Can't even hold the word of God. That's the water, the living water right there. You know, when you can hold the word of God and when you let it co convict you and you obey it, when you start obeying it, then you are on your way to deliverance. You are on your way to getting fixed. But if you can't take the word of God and you can't obey it, you're going to have a hard life. You're going to have a hard life. Because there's two types of believers. People who are fixed can listen to this. Wake up, church. People who are fixed already, meaning fixed, God done fix them, uh, and can store up water to flow into someone else's life, become a pro producer that helps someone else naturally and physically and spiritually. So that's one type of believers. The second type of believers is the people who never get fixed themselves, so they can't store up nothing to flow because too many cracks and leaks, so they don't become producers. Are y'all getting it? They never become a producer. This is where the church world is at today. You hardly see people, you know, you know, you know, with all of these bishops that's in all of these uh, scandals right now, we're talking about some of these men that's caught up in these scandals going on. We talk about some heavy hitters been around for, for many, many years, have thousands of followers and they are caught up in so many scandals. Why? Because they didn't, they didn't, they didn't get fixed. Hello, somebody. Um, it could be things that they even started out before they even became these tele uh, evangelists, okay, that they never fixed. They just went on like it wasn't there. And guess what, guys? It's going to leak. It's going to keep leaking. Hello, somebody. That's why now they up at about 60 years old and all these scandals popping off. Why? Because they never got fixed. Before they out there preaching to thousands of people, Many are called, but few are chosen. Few are chosen. A few, a few. God is like, I'm only going to work with a few because there's only a few of them that's going to be willing to let me fix them. Hello, somebody. That's going to be willing to say, I'm a liar, liar, liar. I'm a cheater, cheater, cheater. I ain't no good. I ain't no good. I ain't no good. But I know, Jesus, you can fix me. You can fix me, Jesus. 
It's not a lot of people that tells the truth. And if you can't tell the truth, you can't get healing. And this is why, again, like I said, these people that have been around uh, preaching and teaching for 20, 30, 40 years. Why? Because they no, they're preaching and teaching, but ain't nobody took time to get their self fixed. You're leaking water everywhere. Everywhere you walk, it, it, there's a leak, there, there's a line going because you ain't get fixed. And sooner or later, all that stuff that you're doing that you never went back and tried to get fixed and healed, it's going to catch up to you. Bible says your sin will find, your sin will catch up with you if you don't do something about it. That stuff just don't go away. Somebody said, how do we know we listening to the right word? It's so many pastors out here preaching wrong. Well, you have to, you have to listen. You have to read the word of God for yourself. And if you have the Holy Ghost, you got to pray and ask the Holy Spirit for discernment. So you will know if they're not preaching, uh, repent, be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus for remission of your sin and be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's primary. If they're not preaching nothing to that primarily, that's how you get saved. You don't need to be listening to them. You need to be listening to people that's preaching out the word of God. So how do you know that? The only way you're going to know is you got to read the Bible for yourself. It's not the preacher responsibility to make you understand every single thing. It's my, it's our responsibility to bring you the word of God and bring it and give you the information where you can find the scripture, just like what we're doing today. And we do every Sunday and every Tuesday up here. It's all about scripture and bringing the scripture, break, being able to break it down to you where you can understand it and apply it to your life. What good is a preacher preaching for you to you and you don't understand nothing they talking about? What good is it they're not say, saying just like what, what, what I was here at the village, we're working on self-improvement, self-evaluation, because it starts with you. It don't start with no preacher, it starts with you. You working out your soul salvation with fear and trembling. So that you can get to that level where you will be able to discern what is right and what is wrong. This ain't the right way to go. This is the right way to go. Amen. If they're not preaching out the Bible, don't follow them. And you have to read the word for yourself. And not only that, guys, you have to get rooted and grounded. You can't be looking toward other people to uh, give you a word of God when you don't know anything about the word of God yourself. You have to sit and be taught so that you, the word can get rooted in you, grounded in you. And so when somebody come your way, you will know, oh no, that ain't the word of God. Or no, that's not that scripture. That's not what that scripture mean. You will get knowledge. And you will be able to apply the knowledge. See, the thing is wrong with the child, the most believers in the world, um, just too busy. Don't want to sit down and be taught. You know, it takes a long time. To, you know, like I said, it takes decades to get some situations in your life worked out for you. Um, it took the children of Israel 40 years. Hello, going in a circle um, because of the disobedient that they and, and worship in the golden calf. We, these are simple things that they did, y'all, that was against God, but they had to pay the, the repercussions behind it. You understand? So, again. We are living in the days of Babylon, okay, here in America. And we have to remember, the world way is not our way. That's not how we function. But if you're not being taught correctly, and you're not, and how you know it's correct, because it's coming out of the word of God. And not only that, you have to, you know, you have to be able to see results in whoever you following. If you praying and praying and praying and praying, ain't nothing happening, ain't nothing happening, ain't nothing happening. You, you might need to go and pray and ask the Lord. Do I even, am I in the right place or do I need to be listening to this person or what? It's all about, the Bible says that the kingdom of heaven is not about talking. It's about demonstrating. But how can people demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit within us if we're broken vessels? And this is why I keep going back here. The Holy Ghost keep taking me here. You can't have power with God if you're broken. You got to get fixed. You got to get fixed. It don't matter who's preaching what if you're broken. 
You got to get fixed. Once God starts rebuilding on you and plugging things up in your life, making you understand, oh, that's why I did that. Oh, that's why I end up where I end up. Once you got the full understanding, then you can move on with power. And then you can teach other people how to obtain and get what you got. That's what discipleship is all about. It's called reproduction. Is everybody following me? Reproducing what this Bible, what Jesus taught the disciple. They reproduce what Jesus taught them. And we're supposed to reproduce what the disciples taught us in this word of God. Not out here freestyling on your own, making up your own stuff, doing what's right in your own eye. Make, have an opinion. You know, Christian people have a long way to go. They have an opinion about everything, but can't even tell you why they like Jack up. Have an opinion about everything, everything, okay? And think they know everything and just as broken as they can be. No power to do anything, no discipline to make anything happen in their own natural lives, um, let alone spiritual. You cannot receive spiritual if your natural life is out of order. Hello, somebody. You can only go but so far because the Lord is not even going to take you but so far because you can't. Bible say he does everything in order. Your natural life has to be in order too. You can't be out here just living like life on the edge and then wondering why your life is jacked up. Wondering why you ain't got no power. Well, don't wonder unless you doing the work on yourself. Amen. Amen, somebody. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is saying on today, he did not give his life up for what the believers are doing. He gave his life up so we can reproduce what he taught. So we can go out there and be producers, bringing people to Christ, you know, getting out of poverty, being able to help somebody else. You know, you got to just, we got to be producers. But until, you know, like he said, until people stop trying to dig their own holes, that's what he said, they have dug for themselves. It's to, it, until you stop trying to dig for yourself, okay, then your results going to keep being the same thing. Amen, somebody. He just said, this is the Lord. He said, but my people have done two Amen. evil things. Abandon me on top of abandoning me. They out there trying to do it on their own. When my word is the um, illustration and directions on how you ought to live as a believer. But if you're not reading my word, how are you going to know that? Amen. And if you're not under the right teacher, filled with the Holy Ghost, have been have once upon a time was broken. God fixed them. You know that it, He fixed them, and they with the Lord because you see results. Hello, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. You want to know if somebody who to follow, who not to follow? If you don't see no results, and I'm talking about real results, not no fake stuff. If you don't see people' lives changing changing for the better then you ought to know you don't need to be following them because we're not talking about people just getting out of the wheelchair we talking about getting your life right with christ hello somebody and you got results your life is not where it was before you started coming to the place you done made so many. I know everybody here on this village. Your life is not. Your life has never been the same since y'all started coming and coming consistently. And you know, not just coming, applying what you're learning. It's not all up to the preacher. We teach you what you need to know to make it. But if you stop coming or you stop applying it to your life, you're gonna get the same results. I just wish people would understand this. I just wish people would understand it. I really do. To get a hold to what the Holy Ghost is saying. Because there is going to be no change if you don't change. God ain't no magic genie. And it take, like I said, it took the children of Israel 40 years. It, it, people are still recovering y'all from Hurricane Katrina. Hello, somebody. It takes a long time to recover lost time that you don't mess up in your own life. By making what? Bad decisions. But you got to be able to confess it, own up to it, forgive the people who dogged you out, whatever, so you can move on, so God can fix you. But it takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. 
unless you're working diligently at it. Amen. Amen. So to God be the glory. Thank the Lord for this word on today. I'm going to go ahead and pass the mic because I just keep saying the same thing over and over and over because that's what Holy Ghost kept telling me in my ear. You know, let them know, you know, it's too many people out here trying to do stuff on their own. They're not under the right leadership. Again, if somebody, if you ain't never seen no results of somebody like personally, you know, my thing is, this is why I tell people, if you come on this village, you're not going to get what you get here on this village or nowhere else. I done said this a thousand, a gazillion times. You all can go out there to the buildings. I have nothing against that. I love the children of God. I love the Lord Jesus. But what I will share with you, you have to get somebody who has been fixed to teach you the right way and to lead you. I lead by example. Anybody that ever follow me, I lead by example. I'm not, I never, this is before I was even born again, okay? It was what it was and it is what it is with me. I have never lived a fake life, period. So my thing is, you know, just worry about getting, get your brokenness fixed. How about that? Amen. That's what the Lord is saying. Get that brokenness fixed out your life so that God can come in and do some marvelous things for you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to drop the mic. Amen. Anybody have a comment? Amen. Please, guys, don't be too long, but make sure you stay on what we could. This word right here, I'm talking about this was like a game changer. The Lord himself was talking to the, uh, the children. It was saying all this stuff. So please stay on the subject. All right. Hey, I ahead. know that when I came on this village, I've been, I look, I changed. I'm telling you, I know when God, first of all, I prayed before I even came to the village because, you know, the, the the faith that God gave me, I used it to, um, yeah, you know, you got to use the faith that you have while you grow to another level. And um, when I prayed, um, I came, I, God directed me to the village. And everything that I that I knew then was good, but when I came on the village and we broke it down, you know, from your experience, um, and 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 plus what you learned from the you know the people before you, it really has helped me. And I seen a lot of you know I seen the power of God on this village. Like I I mean like stuff like you know. I remember that, um, first of all, I seen uh, Monique get healed from COVID-19 several times. You know, I done seen uh, God heal Kamiko from cancer. You know, I done Amen. seen God. Say that again. No, I done seen, I done, look, I done seen the Lord heal, um, um, uh, wait, it was something else that I saw. That, oh, that, you know, keep the baby in the womb to the ninth month. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, on TT, like before she wasn't doing that. This baby was in there, Lundy. She was in there until it was the right time. And I mean, yeah. I done seen stuff like, um, man, I done seen so many stuff on this bill. I, you know, that's the kind of stuff that the Bible talk about signs and wonders. Yes. You know, I done seen you, you know, Tell us about the blessed oil. We use the blessed oil. We got it. And the blessed oil, we apply it on the doorpost of the house. In the house, you know, you can feel the difference. I done seen um, when we pray outside my mom's house and they ain't there about to cut each other up and shoot each other up. And then I walk in there and you can hear crickets and, and, and just peace. You know, I done seen, I done seen my son right here. He just right here with me, you know. We praying for our children. I done seen the grandbabies getting baptized, the children, the wayward children coming back, Amen. getting baptized. You know, I done seen doors open for me, apartments come, jobs come. Yes. I mean, I, I mean, you know, results. You done seen it. I just see the power of the Holy Ghost in my life, and I see, I feel the change too. You know, I done cleansed my stuff up. I was dirty. I had a Amen. lot of thinking. I was I had a lot of stinking thinking and a lot of bad stuff that I had to get rid of. And you know, I oh and the prayer buddy, you know, I I that's another thing that two chased away ten thousand. And you know, I done seen that help me out when I got some things going on first 
with praying with you, Sister Kimmy, and then praying with my prayer buddy. You know, I just needed all of that. Everything that God has supplied in the village, I done took advantage of, and it's been a privilege. It's a privilege yeah. to have it, and it's the way that I want to go with 2024 and beyond because in these last and evil days, preparation. You can't get ready when the rapture's going on. You got to be ready already. Yes. And that's what we're doing right here. We're getting that's ready. That's yeah. why he went, to, he went to the cross. He died for us. And he resurrected for us. And he showed us the way. And, and that's why we're here together now. He showed us our power when he came back out of that, that dead place. He didn't mm -hmm. handle Jesus ain't handle no dry bones. He came no. back in full power. Amen. When he resurrected, he broke the, he went and got them keys. Mm -hmm. He got the power. He got the dominion. He got everything that we need. So I thank God for his resurrection. I thank God yeah. for resurrecting me, all of us, from my dead old selves. Yes. We went Amen. The and I just thank God for all of it. And I see the power of God in the village and in the, our prayers being answered and results. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All amen. right. Yeah. Amen. 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 It's all about, you know, being able to see a uh, result. Okay. Anybody else? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. <clears throat> thank you and praising God for uh, this celebration of Christ today. Uh, thank you and praising God for uh, the instructions that He's continuously given to us because we are the few, the few. Uh, you know, yeah. that are chosen. And I thank and praise God for us being the remnant because um, if you if you get this word and you hide it in your heart, um, it's going to be with you daily. And mm -hmm. um, what I got out of the message, um, like when a vessel is repaired, right? And you put in, um, you put your water in, 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 in the vessel, right? In the pot, right? And the pot is simmering and the pot is going for a long time. What happens and what becomes of that broth? You know what becomes of it? It becomes more potent. Yes. Right? The flavors become stronger, right? Mm -hmm. You can identify or or when you're tasting it, it's so pronounced that you that you can identify the kindness, the loving, the compassion, the forgiveness. You can taste it. Taste yeah. it. So yeah. I thank you, praise God. That's the analogy I got. When God is pouring into us. But if we have cracks, then guess what? Our seasoning is leaving. Our yeah. flavor is leaving. Yeah. So I thank you, praise God, that he brings the focus back where the focus needs to be, right? Yes. Uh, get your healing. You know, yes. confess your own sins. And you, and, you, and you stay before the Lord asking him to heal you of those things that were committed against you, those violations that, that have hurt you and have been a part of you for so long, you know, and like I always say, you know, the, the, the devil wants you to have condemnation. He wants you to feel ashamed of certain things, but some of these things is not on you. Some of these things were done to you. To so you, yeah. You got to dig it out. Call it what it is, you know, Lord, why am I so promiscuous? What happened? What happened, Lord? Mm -hmm. Who who was at some altar, you know, doing something? Lord, show me so I can be free of this. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And God has been so merciful. He has. God has took us on a journey. And he has, he has, matter of fact, God has identified a lot of it for us. Uh, yes. When he Hello. Told to the young women about the abortion. Oh, you got to pray for that. Why? Because that was a human sacrifice that you did and did not even know that you was offering up your child, you know, to the devil. You didn't know yep. that. You yep. know, so God has called these things out so we can go back and repent of them. You know what I'm saying? So we can be made whole. So that way, when you open it up and your living waters is coming forth, it's pure and it is of a strong essence. And it, and it has the truth in it. You know what I'm saying? And that's where the conviction comes. And that's why Jesus said, you will do greater things, right? But you can't do the greater thing unless you visited the brokenness, okay? Amen. So, you know, don't don't shy away from it. You know, go, I say, meet it head on. You know, where, where are my flaws, Lord? Help me um to, to, to accept it, to accept yes, the flaws in myself and realize that 
um, just like Sister Kamiko always said, I'm not perfect. No, I'm a work in progress. We all are, you know, but I just thank and praise God for his word, for letting us know that we don't have to stay a broken vessel. You know, um, he is in the healing business. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You can take it to someone who already knows how to heal you. Hallelujah. Like taking it to the blacksmith, to the shoe repair. God knows how to heal it. Hallelujah. Amen. So that on today is more than enough to be grateful for because you know why you don't have to stay broken. You don't Amen. have to stay without. We know a man from Galilee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. That can set you free. So I Amen. just thank you. Pray God. Praise God on today. Thank you, Lord, for dying for our sins. Thank you, Lord. You took it upon yourself, something, a price that none of us could pay. And Nobody. then after you died for us, you, you blessed us with your Holy Spirit to, to lead us in this natural world where all these things are surrounding us. You know, and if we give one ear to it, you know, we may slip and fall. But we thank and praise God for keeping us on the straight and the narrow. And we thank and praise God for our uh our beloved teacher, Sister Kim. So I thank and praise God for all of this today. I just thank you, Lord, for teaching us, you know, how uh, to seek healing so that yes. we can help in his kingdom. Because that's really what God is building us up for, to be helpers in his kingdom. He's not just doing it for our own benefit. He's doing it so that when we open our mouths, we will have effect. It will affect some somebody. It will affect. Yes. So, you know, I thank and praise God for that on today. Amen. Yes. Yes. I think this is so profound. Um, this word that was in Jeremiah that he gave to me, because I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's so self-explanatory. He, you know, and this is the thing. I don't understand why people be so confused because the Lord is a straight shooter. Okay. You don't beat around no bush. Um, he tell you what it is and it's up to you to accept it and do it. My people have done two evil things. He said two, not one, but two. He's very self-explanatory. That's why I don't understand why everybody running around here so daggone um, confused. He said they have abandoned me. <laughs> right then and there is an answer to a lot of stuff going on in America. Hello, somebody. We, I'm not going to say we, they, people in the world have abandoned the Lord. There's no other way to put it. He just said they have abandoned me. And he's letting them know, not only did they abandon me, the fountain of living water. What he just uh, just said in the book of John. Jesus. Look, that was Jesus talking right there, y'all. Hello, somebody. That's Jesus talking right Amen. here in John. Hello, somebody. He just didn't Amen. reveal his name as Jesus, but that was Jesus talking. Hello. Okay? He said, right here, right here, he abandoned me to the fountain of living water, and they have dug for themselves cracked. Crap. In other words, you're trying to say the way of the Lord is not the right way. You're going to go find your own way to do it. Uh, the way of me making money is not, you know, the way the Bible say. The way the Bible say and what I teach, if you disagree, that's you disagreeing with the Lord. This ain't my word. This is the Lord word. Amen. I mean, do y'all think I would waste my time coming up on here on my own for wishing? I would not be doing this if I wasn't being obedient to the Lord. I have a life too and a family, okay? I don't have to do this. Amen. I just want people to understand. It's serious. So, it, it you know what I'm saying? It takes a lot of time and energy to do what I do, to get a word from the Lord. I don't know what other people are doing. All I can tell you is what I do. I have to always be in fasting. I have to always be in prayer to get a word from the Lord. I hope y'all don't think the word just come and drop on my head. It, it takes discipline. It takes practice. It takes doing a lot and being real mm -hmm. with yourself and God to get a word from the Lord. It don't just happen, abracadabra. This is why the Lord is saying, get yourself together and get yourself knowing where your bad spots are, your brokenness, so that he can fix you. So you don't remain in that state of mind, that state mm -hmm. of being confused all the time and in the state of rebelliousness. And people have to understand all this rebelliousness going on against the Lord Jesus in the world, that's witchcraft. That is witchcraft. Bible says rebelliousness is as of witchcraft. Right. Trying to find a different way that's not the right way. I just wish, wish people, it's very, it's very primary. It's not a lot. You don't have to have a PhD to understand this stuff. Do it the way the Lord say, do it. 
and you will get the right result. You can't, you know, take a time out and be pity partying over here, pity party. Just stay on your journey, even if it's a snail's pace. But the most important thing the child of God has to understand, you got to do it the Lord's way. Amen. Okay, anybody else? Praise the Lord. I just want to thank and praise God just for giving us this good word today. You know, it's yeah. all it's, it's the instructions he give it right to us. And I, yeah. you know, I just want to thank and praise him for that. And thank and praise him for you being obedient because you know, um, I was thinking about when I ain't understand nothing that was said on, on Easter Sunday, I mean on Resurrection Sunday. I ain't know nothing where I can remember what was going on. You know, <laughs> I, all that time we had been in there yeah, all them hours, and I can't tell you one thing, but how they what songs they sung. That's it. Amen. And Amen. The only reason I knew the songs is because I was thinking with them. You was on the choir. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, you know, I just thank and praise God because last on last Sunday, um, you know, um, I was asked. Well, I heard they said I heard what you know what was going on, but they had to leave and go to work. But it was I was asked what was. What was the lesson I'm about? And I was able to remember it. I was able to, you know, say say it word for word. I said, but look, let me go ahead and put the YouTube on so you can see it too. Yes. You know, Amen. So I, I praise God that you making it so plain that even if you were special or anything like that, you able still to get it. It's so plain that all of London can get it. Amen. Thank you, TT. Yes. So, I just want to thank me a whole bunch of confusion. You know, and I just want to thank and praise God for my change because yes. you know for the change because I'm thinking about all these other places that I went and how I stayed the same person. All yeah. these other places that I done went and no change at all. Like I went right back to doing what I was doing. Mm -hmm. You know, Amen. You know, now I remember one day you said. You 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 know once you you once the Lord tell you you know you know you know what you're supposed to be doing and you're not doing it you being held accountable you know yeah. what I'm saying Lord think about now everything if I do something wrong even if I get a wrong thought I'm like Lord please forgive me yes you know yes. Just, it, conscious just, of it yes yeah and come easily get, just get convicted and like Lord forgive me like last night that that our lady was crying and going off and I was just like Lord I just want to go to sleep. And then I said, you know what? My mama said, see, just the baby, T.T., once she get what she want, what she needs, she'll stop crying. And I got mad because I'm like, no, she just crying. And then I had to think about it. I said, you know what, Lord? Lord, forgive me because she's right. As soon as I get her cup, she went on to sleep. But I was Amen. so Because she got a, a 5 o'clock job in the morning or something because she gets up at 5 o'clock in the morning and, and be up all day. <laughs> so I'm so more out by then. Yeah, I was so well out by then. I couldn't think past go. So I just, you know, I just thank and praise God that even just my thought changed. Like even yes. the fact I'm telling you, I would say some stuff and I wouldn't care about what right. I said. I would, I would not, I would think twice. I would size you up and cuss you out and hurt. like I don't do that stuff no more. You know, and I just thank and praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah! You know, for the change, like. I still got my mouth, but I can say I say stuff in a different way that it makes yes. you know, a person think like that. Yeah, she could, like I know people were saying now like that. She could have said it a different way, but you know, said it the old pop off way. Yes, but amen. I, I, I'm feeling out with with the way I'm talking, especially yes. you know, the babies they start sucking up what you're saying. Yes, so, amen. So I just want to thank and praise God for the change that He is doing, and the people is seeing. The change in me. I had somebody come up to me and say, "You know, Dad, T, you you different. You you be out out, out partying. You don't be you be you stay in your lane. Nobody don't hurt from you. You know, hurt. You ain't making no noise. You just you you know you quiet. And I can tell something different. And I said, because I've been churching. I've been going to church. I got the spirit. I, you know, I said I, I'm just following what I'm supposed to be doing. Be obedient. And That's I started right. fighting them, sending them the link. Amen. So Amen. I, Thank and praise God just for the change and just yeah. the renewing of our minds. That is so important. The renewing yeah. of your mind is where it starts. Mm -hmm. The renewing of your mind, because you gotta think I went to do this. You gotta That's think right. I'm going to be obedient. You gotta think that, okay, Lord, forgive me. You gotta yeah. do all this. So I thank God 
But the main thing is the renewing of our mind, bossing our thinking up. That's it. That's it. So, Amen. And, and look, y'all say y'all was about to be rappers. Y'all was going to be rappers. That's, that tickled me. Then sister, then sister Crystal came right in and did her rap. Yes. <laughs> then she, Amen. Look, I can yes. see y'all be rappers. I can see. Oh, yeah, honey. We were striving to be a rappers back in the day. Yes, we were. <laughs> we ain't had no idea, girl. Yes. Look, and y'all probably were rapping about the real stuff. The stuff they rap about, they don't know what they talking about. Right, exactly. <laughs> a so bunch of men. Pray my strength in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Yes. Um, that's so true. It starts with you being. Um, I think Monique had mentioned this earlier too about DP. He's always saying change your perspective of the situation, and that it, it does work. And you know, for the Lord to give this type of platform where you can get so much help, so much things that you're not going to get in a, in a regular building, y'all. I, I keep saying that, but you know, I know what I'm talking about. I've been in the church world a long time. I know what to look for. I know how they roll. So they don't take time out because a lot of them are broken. Okay. And they can only give you what they can give you because they can only take the so much because they got a lot of cracks, you know? So the thing is, you know, just know that wherever you can get help, you know, you need to stick with it. Wherever you're getting help, you need to stick with it. Amen. Anybody else have a comment about the word on today? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, the songwriter say, he can heal. He can deliver. He can make your brokenness. I thank God for that one today because Amen. I tell you, um, um, Brian Cage said it best when um the song was broken but healed. But then that's what I was thinking. But then when I read in the word about the living word, you understand me? That's what means your brokenness. Yes. It's the word of God. When when we start going through our um um, our course on forgiveness, that thing has, I tell you, has brought things out that you don't even know you're holding. You, things that you don't even, things that you think, okay, well, I'm, um, that happened when I was 12, or that happened when I was five, or that happened, you know, way back yeah. when. But those are the things that create your character. Amen. And it's amazing because you know, I know people not just run around here thinking about character, you know, and people not just running around here think, you know, because especially when it comes to you, you know, you always looking outward, but you are not looking inward. And inward, that yeah. is what where it, it makes the difference. The change is from the inside out because you yeah. can change your appearance. You can put on makeup. You can put on clothes. You can put on um um. Um, those things to keep your waist in. You can you can lift your butt up. You can um, put on socks to keep your legs in. You can do all of that. Yeah. But the inside still look the same. Yeah. No change. You no. Know, no change. And you know one thing about God and, and the Word. Everything is a movement. Everything is movement. And people, yep. you know, it's amazing because where where the issue comes in is where there's no movement when you stop. Yep. Yeah. When you stop praying, when you stop fasting, when you stop reading your word, when you stop um coming around the um saints of God, when mm -hmm. you stop being on in the truth, that's yep. what it you come in at because then the dragon gonna drag you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'm gonna tell you it's amazing because things are coming your life. I thank God for this living word because everything that's in there is in the living word, everything mm -hmm. that happens in your life is in the living word there's yep. nothing that's hidden you understand me there's everything is transparent right there in front of you in the word of god yes it is yes it you is know, jesus went to calvary it. jesus went to calvary he went to calvary for the remission of our sins and when not some of them every last one of them any issue that you can have in your life, anything mm -hmm. yeah. that any kind of brokenness that has occurred in the vessel, 
in your vessel. God is the answer. The only answer. <laughs> He's the only one that can fix it. That's it. Not people, not drugs, not alcohol, not, not a man, not a woman, Man. not having kids, none of that. Not a parent. Nothing can fix it but the word yeah. of God. That's the it. Living water, the living water. And, you know, a lot of times when when things go on in your life and I notice your voice be taken away. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if your voice is taken in, you can't pray. You can't, you're not reading, you're not meditating, you're not, it it, it stops, it stops yeah. the movement. <clears throat> yeah. You have to continue to move. You have yeah. to continue to get down and pray. I tell you, I thank God for this self-evaluation because yeah. so I, I tell you, it, it brings you to deliverance. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It does. And does. that what we all need Me, people yeah. say well prayer yeah you can pray all you want to but these kind only come out through fasting and praying so you have to be delivered from these things yeah. i tell you because one issue incurs another issue and another issue and you look up and your life has spiraled out of control and and you stuck Mm -hmm. And you don't yep. even realize why. No, so, self, that's what I was trying to say before. Self-awareness. This is what this lesson that the Holy Ghost has given all of us through me. Is, is this all about self-awareness? You have to be aware of yourself. Amen. Amen. And a lot of people not because see our eyes look out. Yeah. Most people don't, don't realize it. You, your eyes look out. They don't look in. And when you look in, in, in the mirror, you still looking at something. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to, to um, you know, focus on, on things that happen from day to day to day. You can't go years like that. Self-evaluation is so important because you will look up and it'll be 50 years and you never looked at what happened to you when you was five. Mm hmm. Yeah. Because you kept it moving. Yeah. So to God be the glory. I thank God for um this the lessons that we're doing on this self evaluation because there's a lot of things that you learn about yourself that you don't like that needs improvement and the only way it can be improved or changed or moved or fixed is through Jesus Christ the Messiah. Y'all pray much in the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And you know, I am so, I tell the Lord every time I get down to pray, I'm so grateful for this lesson. It is so needed in not just, well, number one, believe it's lifestyle, but number two, any hum, human being. This, this, this is like a game changer for everybody's life. This is why a lot of people are in jail. Because of something that they they experienced as a child or teenager that never got dealt with. And when they became grown, that stuff just started growing inside of them, growing inside of them, and they never dealt with it, meaning that they never was self-aware of it, never was self-aware of it. It takes God to show you yourself, okay? So... You know, because you will go through life and never do self-evaluation, ever, ever. Because it's not a common practice that people commonly practice. It's something that you have to practice when you give your life to Christ. It's not something common. Most of the stuff the Holy Ghost is giving me, y'all, it's not common stuff. The average person is not going to know this. And, you know, this is why the, the prisons are, are, are filled up. This is why these men are over here killing these black women at an all-time high. Something that they have experienced and mentally, it done messed them up, okay? And um, Because they never did self-evaluation to find out why do I hate women so much? Why? This stuff, y'all, this stuff just don't wake up one day and people are like that. This stuff done grew with these people. And nobody is 
Nobody is giving the people the knowledge of what I like what I'm doing. If all the churches was doing this, giving the, the people of God this message and telling them work on yourself, this is self-evaluation time for the believer to make it to heaven. You can't go to heaven if you got unforgiveness in your heart. If you got grudges in your heart, people are talking, people in the churches are, are for decades, for decades been majoring in the minor stuff. And that's why, why? That's why what? You don't see no power, no movement going on. It's only a handful of churches, y'all, a handful, a handful that you can see miracle signs and wonders and they're not fake. So again, I don't know what else to say. Like if you got the, you got all of this, I don't know nobody who would not want to be here because this is, this, you're not going to get all of this stuff at no other building. You will maybe get how to live, you know, righteously, but you know, this type of stuff is something that God is dealing with, with only particular people. You understand what I'm saying? It's not nationwide. It's a nationwide problem. But again, many are called, but only a few are chosen. Again, a lot of people not willing to do what I do. You know, the discipline and the work that I put in, people, the average believe the uh, average leader is not willing to do all of that because it's a lot of work. If you think your job is a lot that you got to work on yourself, imagine what I have to do when I present myself before the Lord. Amen. A lot of leaders don't, they can't, they don't do they they don't want to do that work. And that's why you don't get, you only get what you get. Okay. Anybody else have a comment about the word today? I have a quick comment. I You on mute. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to say thank you for um the words today because, you know, like you said, sometimes you think that you are finished with being broken and you're not. Because, no. you know, yesterday I was feeling down. I was really feeling down. And Sister Christian called me out of the blue. And she just Amen. lifted my whole spirit. And, you know, we talked about the brokenness yesterday. Because, yeah. you know, this time of the year is hard for me. Because, you know, this is the time of the year that I lost my father. I found him dead in the apartment. I will never mm -hmm. forget that. But I moved on from that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then, yeah. you know, just broken this period with your family, your friends, yeah, yes. you know, people you think is on your team, everything. That's what me and Sister Christian talked about yesterday. Yes. So I thank and praise God for these words today because today my spirit is totally lifted. Today, yeah. I'm not doing no thinking, thinking today. Yeah. Today, I'm not laying on my couch with my blinds closed. I got yeah. up, I showered, I've got myself up and out. I'm, yeah. you know, I'm moving around. You know, yeah. then what you said today about the water going through the cracks, that, yeah. that's what was going through me yesterday. It was seeping yes. out. So yes. I Deep thank and praise God for Sister Crystal knowing yes. my heart. I, I thank and praise God for the villagers. I thank and praise God for me to just even be able to express myself about, you know, being broken yes. and stuff like that. So I appreciate the self-evaluation of yeah. uh, what we're learning here. And I just appreciate it. So I thank you. I needed to hear these words today. I'm going to re-meditate on those scriptures later on tonight when I have yeah. a little quiet time. And um, I just want to thank and praise God. That's all. And I thank you, villagers. I love you all. Happy Easter. I funny said bunny bunny to, to to all my kids that I love so much that don't live close to me. And um, just everybody enjoy your families today. And yeah. I just thank and praise God for this word today because it definitely lifted my spirit today. So thank you. Yes, to God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. Yes, a uh, happy resurrection day. We don't do Easter up here. Pagan holiday. Okay. But yes, I'm so happy that uh Crystal was able, um, you know what I'm saying, to bring you um some encouragement and whatever you needed. And that's why it's important again. I'll say this one more time and I ain't gonna say it no more. It's important to stay connected to the believers, the body of Christ. Amen. Anybody else want to have a comment? I do. Um, this Jasmine. Um, I just want to thank you for the word that, um, thank the Lord for the word that was put forth. Yes. Uh, I got a lot of things to say, but I feel like it's just not, today's just not the day to say it. And I really want to mm -hmm. have like private conversations about what, 
is on my mind because it's like being on Zoom is like I feel this feeling in my chest. And it's like, it's like I want to say things and then it's like I can't get them out or, you know, or or it's just it's just a lot of things that I be wanting to say things about. Um, you know, when you're teaching us the word. Yeah. And um, like I said, I just feel like this feeling in my chest right now. And I just like I got a lot of things that I want to say, you know, but because I'm learning. I'm learning too right now. I'm yeah. learning too. Yeah. And I, I've always been the type of person that'll think a lot about a situation or think about a lot about the word, like when 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 I'm receiving it and it sits mm-hmm. on my brain a lot. And then I'll be trying to figure it out, you know, and then I might hear the word from someone else that's telling me the word and they don't cause they don't line up together. It's completely off and it's not the same. But today, you know, the self-evaluation, you know, it's like I was considering my ways when I first started getting on Zoom and then I started seeing things that wasn't right to me in my eyes. And that's what pushed me back up off of uh, Zoom a lot. But it was like I was really considering my ways at this point. You know, I was doing what I was supposed to have been doing. And and then things just start showing itself to me. And I was like, that's not right. You know, these are things are not right. And then I stopped coming on Zoom. And today when I got on Zoom, it's like, like I said, my chest is like thumping right now. And I don't know why, but I know that it's the devil because he always trying to, you know, confuse you, you know, when you're getting the right word. You know, he's always trying to confuse you, you know, but... I do want to talk to you more, you know, because I want to, I want to do right. And I, 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 every, I do learn when I come up here, you know, Miss Kimmy, I do learn and you, you teach me very, very well. And I, I take it and I listen and I, 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 it'd be on my brain for about the whole week. Mm-hmm. But, um, I, I was considering my ways at one point and then I just stopped today. I learned that, you know, I'm going to consider my ways and I'm not going to look at the other things that are wrong. You know, I got to start with me and thank right. you for that today. Right. So I, I, I'm definitely going to, you know, use that on my daily journey. You know, even if I don't get on zoom every day, I still know that what I did get from my prayer mother and what I did get from here on zoom is that yeah. you pray and you read your word. And these are the two yeah. things that has always stuck with me regardless Yes, amen. So I thank you for the word today. I thank everybody as well. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Yes, that's major thing is just, you know, right now, that's what we're doing on the village that God has given me to give to the villagers. Self-evaluation um, is going to lead to a lot of healing, a lot of cleansing, a lot of, you know, paint, um, pent up anger, pent up, you know, disappointments, things to that nature. So a lot of, a lot of time, those things, those negative things that we haven't dealt with is what lead us to the wrong choices in life. But we don't realize that because when you're in it, you're in it. Only time you can realize it is the guy has to come and bring somebody in that situation or in your life to give you the, the correct information. Amen. All right. So to God be the glory. I'm so glad everybody came out. And I'm glad that you did decide to come up here on today, Jasmine. God bless you. And um, Ruben, you and your teenager, your son. I see you, Rashida. Hi, Rashida. Congratulations for all the offers you got from the colleges. Let us know when you decide which one you're going to. Oh, I decided already. Oh, where you going? Um, John Jay. In the city. Oh, that's your mama's school. Your no. mom used to go to John Jay College. Kamiko's alma mater. Yeah. Yeah. So she go, going, you want, um, So she going to be a lawyer then? She wants to be a lawyer. John Jay College Criminal Justice. Yes. I don't know. She just want to do law. She wants to do law enforcement, but she's not sure yet. Okay. Well, that's so what's like, up. You know, she want to be a cop. She could work in the offices. She don't really got to be on the street. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's a lot well, of stuff. Congratulations. I I was just telling one of my sons not too long ago that I'm Bunny is so, so smart. It takes a smart kid to get accepted to these schools, these type of schools. You understand? Amen. You don't Amen. just get accepted in these schools for no reason. You got to have a third grade point average. Yes. You got to maintain it to stay in the school. So I'm just happy and I want to just uh, salute you. 
uh, Rashida, on your um, being obedient, yeah. staying in school, getting your classwork done, no matter what you may have been facing in high school, um, you got out, okay? Yeah. And you are making Listen a difference. Me up. Listen me up. Listen me up all day. <laughs> yeah. Amen. I'm just happy yeah. for her. And I, I really, when I see young people doing well, I'm always the first cheerleader because it's not easy, you know, making the right choices at your age when there's so much other mess going on that you yeah. can choose to do, you know? So uh -huh. I Kim, can I to, um I just want to say one thing to Rashida. Congratulations, honey. Yes, I want Thank to tell you. Rashida congratulations because growing up in New York is a concrete hey. jungle. And yes, uh, I thank and praise God that he has kept you. You may not realize it um, in its fullness, but God has kept you. Uh, growing up in the projects is no joke. No, you, it's not. You know, only the survival, uh, the survival of the fittest, you know, gets through what they got through. And like you, it may have seemed, you know, really easy, you know, but that's only because God covered you, you mm -hmm. know. So take that with you wherever you go. You, and, and remember yes. to you know, be obedient to your mom and God will take you further. He will take you so much further than you could have ever imagined, you know, Amen. but I'm just so appreciative because you're such a beautiful child and I'd be thinking about a grown because we we grew up on, on 100 Terrace too, so we mm -hmm. know what it's like, you know, so yeah. when we see yeah. somebody prevail, we know that that was nothing but God, nothing yeah, but God. Yeah. Amen. So stay on your path and on your journey, young lady. Yes. Congratulations. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. So to God be the glory on this uh, glorious day. Just so grateful that.